What is up and welcome back to the Build A Better You podcast. I'm your host, Austin Chan. And today we are going to be talking about how to lose weight without having to count calories. And so this really does originate from the fact that I get a ton of questions about how to lose weight without having to count calories. I do understand that counting calories is not for everyone, but I also do want to preface this podcast by saying that although you don't have to count calories to lose weight, you have to realize that calories still do count. Because it doesn't matter if you are tracking your calories on an app or writing your food down or searching it on Google. The simple fact is food contains energy, energy in the form of calories. And whether or not you choose to write that number down, your body still recognizes food as a source of energy. Now, obviously, your body doesn't know exactly how many calories it's eating. But the simple fact is, is that it knows if enough energy is coming in, then it will maintain its weight. If it just has enough that it needs to use, then it's just going to maintain its weight. If it gets more than it needs, you're going to be in a surplus. It's going to likely store that energy depending on what you're currently doing. Uh, if you are doing some sort of resistance training, obviously some of that will partition into building muscle. But other than that, for the majority of the people who are trying to lose weight, they just have a lot of excessive body fat. So this usually ends up getting stored as body fat. And now if you do want to lose weight, you have to be in a calorie deficit. Now this is non-negotiable. The thing I want to also drive home is that being in a calorie deficit, it's, it's not a type of diet. A calorie deficit is literally a state of being or the state of eating less energy than you are burning on a daily basis or on a consistent basis, or should I say that yeah it has to be consistent like you can be in a calorie deficit for one day yeah you might burn a tiny bit of fat but you have to if you want to lose a significant and meaningful amount of fat you have to be in a calorie deficit on for the long term but yeah with that being said you can choose to count calories or you can choose not to count calories but at the end of the day regardless of what you plan to do or are able to do you have to be in a calorie deficit and yeah yeah, that's basically it. Your body just simply knows if it's getting enough energy or not. It doesn't care how many calories you're eating. It doesn't care like all that much. It just knows this This is how much energy I'm getting. It, am I getting enough of this energy? No, then I'm just going to take some from my stores. Yes, I'm going to possibly just use all of that if you're maintenance or I'm going to store this if I'm getting too much energy. Now, I know that counting calories is not fun, but I do recommend this for uh, the majority of the people out there who are able to count calories. Now, I will go over some people who might not be able to. But yeah, let's just establish that, you know, if you are able to count calories, I do recommend this for a lot of people, just simply because it's a huge like learning. Cur- I, I understand it's a huge learning curve for a lot of people. Like your first time counting calories, you're going to be thoroughly confused. You're going to be like, what the hell is this food scale? How do I use this? How do I weigh all my food out and everything? But I I guarantee you after maybe like a week or two of like really trying to learn the process, you'll definitely get it down. It's like super easy once you get get the hang of it. Like, yeah, it's just really the, the, the learning curve. But yeah, a lot of people also complain that, you know, counting calories takes a lot of time. Like, I don't want to waste my time counting calories. But like when you like. Honestly, at first, the learning, like with anything in life, learning a new skill, it just takes a lot more time and effort at first. But after you practice enough, that skill just takes less and less time and you can get really efficient with it. The same goes for counting calories. Like at first, you might take 15 to 20 minutes just to weigh like one single meal. But as you get really good, it like, honestly, I think after doing it for a few years, I think it probably only took like an extra five minutes of my day. Like I could weigh an entire meal in just like around a minute or even less than that. And then, you know, you compound that by like the number of meals I'm eating throughout the day. Like it's an extra five minutes on top of my day. Like if you don't have an extra five minutes on top of your day to learn how to track calories, then it's not, you don't have a time issue. You have a time management issue. And this is like a tough love answer. So yeah, like, Yeah, it just takes an extra five minutes. It's honestly not that difficult once you get the hang of it. And I don't know anyone who's literally that busy that they don't have an extra five minutes to spare. Like I'm sure you can find five minutes that you are probably wasting your time doing like, you know, binging on Netflix or, you know, 
doing some other like time wasting stuff but i'm pretty sure you can find five minutes out of every day and especially this fi these five minutes it's not even a waste of time these five minutes is literally an investment of you know perfecting that skill of counting calories perfecting that skill of learning how to uh view food and learning like calorie density like uh the macronutrient split of certain foods really like this is investing time into educating yourself how to better your health and like seriously the the investment of time like these five like a five minutes a day of investment and you don't have to count calories forever five minutes of investment into counting calories will lead you to possibly lose weight get into better shape get into better health which ultimately will extend your lifespan and also improve your quality of life so i don't really think that you know five minutes is all that much of a waste like seriously just like take five minutes out of your day to learn the skill and eventually you don't even have to do it and the uh, the return on investments is just so much greater than like the five minutes you put in okay anyways enough of the ranting and lecturing so now i do let, let's get into kind of the meat of the podcast we shall see so yeah first thing first i do want to address that you don't have to count calories to lose weight like i said uh calories count whether or you choose to choose to count them or not so this is a very uh well-known saying in the fitness industry i don't know if you've heard it but definitely i've seen it a lot so i'm just repeating a lot of what other coaches say like yeah you don't have to count calories but know that calories do always count when do you consume it and when it gets in your system now Something logical I like to say is uh, if you were in debt and you had to get your finances in order to pay off the debt, would you track your finances by looking at your spending habits, your income, etc.? Or would you kind of take a guess at everything and, you know, be like, yeah, I think I'm spending this much. I think I'm saving this much. Uh, yeah, who knows? I'm just going to eyeball my spending and saving and hopefully I'll be able to save enough money and pay off this debt and be able to balance everything else in life. Obviously not. You would probably, if you like were, obviously if you're making a shit ton of money, like I think you wouldn't have to worry about that. But for the majority of us, we want to have some sort of sensible budgeting and planning to manage our finances. So for the majority of us, if we wanted to really get nitpicky about our spending and really make sure that we saved up and to pay off something like debt or pay off just a huge expense, Obviously, we're going to take, we're going to sit down, take a look at our finances, really focus on, you know, where our money is going every month, what's coming in in terms of money, and really figure out how we can be as efficient with our money as possible and choose where we spend it. And yeah, choose how, where we can intelligently spend it at that. And so this is why I recommend for everyone to try calorie counting for at least 30 days to kind of better an idea of things like how much you're actually eating what accurate portion sizes look like and of course how much food you need personally for losing weight maintaining weight or gaining weight but if you were to ask me do i need to count calories to lose weight i would say no because obviously you don't need to you just have to be in a calorie deficit now counting calories having kind of a concrete and numerical value to tracking your calories and really like writing everything down and having a record of everything obviously that's a lot more organized that's a lot more of a myth myth methodological myth man i have trouble with words sometimes <laughs> uh methodological methodological hold on let me google this meth meth methodical Jesus. Oh my gosh. Uh, myth I, I lost the word again. Oh my gosh. Methodical approach. Okay. Methodical, methodical, methodical. Okay. Yeah. Counting calories helps you have a more structured and methodical approach towards your goals. Whereas if you weren't counting calories at all, you'd just be kind of like, like playing the guessing game so to speak, like, especially when you first start, you don't really know, like a lot of people when they first start out, like not even tracking calories, but if they wanted to lose weight, a lot of people just start out like playing a huge guessing game. Like, like they, they have no idea how much they're eating 
And in fact, there was a very popular study done. I don't know the exact reference, but they basically did a study on how much calories people thought they ate versus how many calories they actually ate. And I think most people were like wrong up to like 10 to 20 percent or even more than that. Actually, I think it was like up to 40 or 50 percent. Yeah, I think the, yeah, the highest was 40 to 50 percent. And if you can imagine, like, let's say your calorie deficit target is 2000, 40 to 50 percent. That is 800 to 1,000 calories off from what you thought you ate. So if you were to eat an extra 500, or sorry, 800 to 1,000 calories, that's approximately equal to an extra like a pound and a half to two pounds of weight gain per week. So no, wait, sorry, not, not per week. Yeah, yeah, per week. Yeah, that's an extra pound and a half to two pounds per week and if you kept that up you would just like gain a significant amount of weight and of course this is what a lot of people struggle with so ultimately like people just highly underestimate how many calories they ate and a lot of people also overestimate how many calories they burn and this is a recipe for disaster for gaining a ton of weight and just not seeing progress at all but however i do understand that a lot of people aren't able to count calories because they may suffer from things such as disordered eating or they're just simply like way, way too busy. I've had a few clients who weren't able to, but like honestly, like I said, it, unless your day is so jam packed that you literally have zero time to dedicate towards this, like not even five minutes, then I would seriously consider you to start tracking your calories. But other than that, um, yeah, it, this is mainly for a lot of people who have disordered eating habits and uh, not that counting calories necessarily leads to disordered eating habits, but more so that if you already have an inclination to trigger disordered eating habits, uh, counting calories for some people can definitely trigger this like even more. So this is why, yeah, this is why I have this like alternative solution. And so Firstly, without further ado, let's get into the meat of this podcast or what you've been waiting for actually, how to actually lose weight without counting calories. So uh, this first method here is, uh, the base of it was developed by Jordan Sight, but I have since then kind of added a bit more things on top of it. Um, I also have a blog article on this, so go ahead and go to my website if you do wanna read this instead at Austin Chan Fitness, but yeah. Other than that, I'm just going to be talking about it. And if you, yeah, if you do want to follow along on my blog, feel free to pull that up. And there are a few visuals on the, on the blog here as well. So that definitely helps if you're more of a visual learner, but if you just want to keep listening, then please do. So basically here's the gist of the method of how to count, how to lose weight without having to count calories. So firstly, you want to be focusing on three three meals and two snacks or three plates and two snacks is what Jordan Zayat calls it. So the whole, yeah, the whole idea is having these three plates and two snacks or three meals, which plates meaning your meals, uh, you're just gonna use a standard size plate. So three meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So generally your meals are going to be divided like this. So half of your meal is going to come from veggies. So half of your plate comes from Vegetables, usually a lot of fibrous vegetables, fibrous non-starchy vegetables, you know, things like cabbage, spinach, you know, really like dark leafy green vegetables or uh, just low calorie vegetables in general. If, yeah, if you don't have any idea what this is, usually this is more like fibrous uh, non-starchy vegetables. And then a quarter of your plate is going to be your protein source. Now I do want to keep in mind a lean protein source. So, you know, chicken, fish, lean cuts of beef, some cuts of beef can be pretty fatty. Same with pork, uh, yeah. But yeah, chicken, fish, uh, tofu, egg whites, eggs, yeah, lean meats. Those are things that come off the top. Uh, Greek yogurt's also a really good one. Uh, yeah, those are pretty much the first few, or the few staples that I eat and recommend to a lot of people for like really lean proteins. And then for the rest of your plate, it's going to come from carbs and fats. So just to kind of wrap things up, uh, half of your plate comes from veggies, quarter of your plate comes from protein, and then the rest from your carbs and fat sources. Now, the thought process behind this is that, you know, veggies and protein are generally pretty low calorie, so that's gonna make up the majority of your plate. 
yeah, if you know that, if you have read my article or have listened to my other podcast on how to stay full on cal- def- calorie deficit, if you haven't, go ahead and check that one out. But that podcast simply covers the thought process behind choosing certain foods to stay full in a calorie deficit. This will lead to better adherence. You won't go hungry or you won't be starving in your calorie deficit, which is what a lot of people struggle with. And ultimately, that's a huge reason why a lot of people give up. So definitely uh, staying full in a calorie deficit really helps you stay adherent and ultimately succeed at your goals. So yeah, uh, the, yeah, the thought process behind choosing protein and veggies is that they are really filling and yeah, those will help fill you up. And generally these are very low calorie items, especially if you choose a lot of lean protein sources and a lot of and a lot of non-starchy fibrous veggies. These are generally pretty low calories. So more often than not, they'll fill you up and they're also like relatively low calories. And so which means you like can't really overeat on them and you'll pretty much be guaranteed in a calorie deficit while also feeling full. And then of course, carbs and fats are, is for the adherence. You don't want to completely cut out carbs and fats. Uh, carbs just helps workout performance. It's also, carbs are just tasty and it doesn't make sense to cut out anything that you don't need to unnecessarily cut out. And also fat is also essential. Fat is pretty calorie dense, this, which is why um, I do, um, if you're reading the chart here with me, it's recommended at 5%. But I don't want to stress that too much. That was just a general recommendation. Uh, as long as your uh, calories and protein is, is in check, fat loss will be the same. So don't worry too much about this. And then moving on to the next square uh, for drinks. So, you know, drink a ton of water, ton of, uh, water is zero calorie and water keeps you hydrated, keeps you healthy. So, you know, there's literally no reason to be drinking. I mean, sorry, there's no drawback to be drinking more water. Uh, black coffee is needed. Black coffee is uh, also very low calories. Like a cup of black coffee has like less than five calories. So yeah, drink on that. Caffeine is also a pretty good appetite suppressant. Uh, also, I don't know a single person who doesn't like coffee. So there's that. Uh, tea also has a little bit of caffeine, less caffeine than coffee, obviously. Uh, also very uh, low calorie and it is filling so yeah any type of liquid is typically very filling for a very low amount of calories no sorry not any type of liquid but generally liquids can be filling in copious amounts especially if you drink a lower calorie version uh zero calories soda or juices or yeah those like al- like alternatively sweetened beverages also help a lot like my thing is drinking a ton of diet soda and no diet soda is not bad There is no supporting research to show that it is carcinogenic or has any detrimental side effects. So yeah, anyone who tells you that is blowing smoke up your ass. Okay, moving on to the next square uh, for snacks and alcohols. So a lot of people when they struggle with, a lot of people do struggle with snacking, I should say. So yeah, this is generally what I can recommend. You don't want to completely cut out snacking, you, but rather giving yourself permission, this definitely helps a lot. So giving yourself permission for two snacks. And generally I'll start off two snacks. People who I find uh, have a higher calorie intake, I'll, I'll, I'll allow them three, or people who kind of struggle with like restriction, then giving them that third snack, giving them that third option just kind of takes off a little bit of that stress. So yeah, two to three snacks. Uh, generally start with two if you find that you feel a little bit more restricted and you're not eating enough then definitely add one more snack it doesn't hurt uh but yeah just having the option of snacks like you don't have to be eating two two or three snacks every single day but if you feel like that day you just you're just feeling snacky and you just want snacks and you're, you're feeling like a little bit more hungry than usual then definitely have some snacks but yeah it's just the psychology of having those snacks like that snack option available just kind of takes you away from that scarcity mindset. So yeah, like when people hear that they can't have something or they shouldn't have something, this typically leads them to uh, like just feel restricted and feel like they want that thing more. Whereas if they had the option or they, yeah, they just have that option or are given the okay on something, they're less likely to feel like they, 
they like really crave it. So yeah, there's that. As for snack options, uh, I always recommend something with like fruit, uh, something protein rich. I do have a few suggestions on this graphic. So uh, yeah, always some kind of fruit, vegetable, some sort of protein, uh, vegetables. And in this square, if you're following along, I also, I also state alcohol. So you can have snacks or alcohol. If you choose to have one serving, and this is, keep in mind, this is one serving because I find that for a lot of people, alcohol, uh, especially when you drink a lot, alcohol really adds up and adds up quick. And especially when you're drinking something, you can easily just down it and just keep, keep going. So these calories really do add up fast. So I really do want to stress that one standard serving. So what is it? 12 ounces of beer, five ounces of wine and an ounce and a half of liquor. So yeah. So throughout your day, you can choose either snacks or alcohol or not, not, not that you have to have alcohol is what I'm saying, but if you decide to have alcohol that day, you're going to have to take away one of your snacks and replace it with that. So this kind of gives you that like freedom to, you know, budget your snacks if you wanted to enjoy some alcohol later that day. Now, I'm not saying that you should always be opting for alcohol. I don't think that's healthy, but yeah, if you find that you're going to go out that day or maybe you you just need you just need to drink that day, then definitely have your alcohol replace those snacks and yeah just enjoy yourself don't restrict your don't overly restrict yourself and then last square here is for eating out so it's just some tips on eating out without having to count calories uh always ask for dressings and sauces on the side dressings and sauces are usually one of the highest calorie things just because they usually contain a lot of oil and fats and like mayo and stuff yeah yeah a lot of fats in there so as we're on the side, you can kind of portion out better that way. Uh, sometimes you'll find that, you know, sometimes restaurants will really overdo it on the dressings. So just kind of having the option of having it on the side will definitely help you like, you know, cut down a little bit. Like you don't necessarily have to like dry mouth the freaking lettuce, but like ask for dressing on the side, add a little bit of it in. Don't like dump dressing on your salad like an asshole and, you know, be smart about it. Like, so obviously you don't have to like cut it out altogether and eat like dry lettuce and have it taste like grass but just be smart about it add dressing as needed but yeah just don't like free pour it like an asshole so and then next tip for restaurants salad is your best option yeah because these are generally the lowest calorie items uh, especially when you ask for the dressing on the side uh yeah but usually if it's most most salads i should say are generally just like protein like especially if it's like a chicken salad or something uh yeah there's usually a lot of protein a lot of veggies so it's generally pretty good and low calorie for you it's just again the dressings and sauces they have on the side so yeah watch that uh dessert try to skip dessert um uh, like yeah honestly yeah dessert is really high calorie and more often than not i find that just the psychology of dessert in general, like psychology coming after a meal, like I feel like, you know, generally we as people after a meal, we're like, okay, we should be full, but always, especially at restaurants, it's like, oh, do you want dessert? And it's like, you know that you really don't want dessert, but just knowing that you have that option, even though you're like filled to the brim, just having that option for dessert, it feels like you just want it. So I feel like a lot of dessert is just like how society and how like psychology has played into it and how we have evolved that like, oh, we should be having dessert after our last meal when in fact, it's like, you know, dessert, it, when you realize that dessert's actually not required, like you don't need dessert. Like dessert is just something that if you really wanted to add on, then sure, but like you don't really need it. And again, I'm not saying to completely cut out dessert, but definitely have that option. Definitely know that desserts are very high calorie and there's often no low calorie substitutes uh no one's gonna be i don't think any restaurant is gonna be carrying like sugar-free ice cream or like yeah sugar-free stuff so yeah generally you want to be skipping dessert unless you are going somewhere and you really try the and you really want to try the dessert in that case i would suggest that you cut out your snacks and alcohol together just have your three or two meals 
or whatever, however many meals. And then when you're going out with that meal, just enjoy that dessert. But know that in advance, just uh, try not to have snacks or alcohol or just any extra calories. And last tip here, don't feel like you need to get your money's worth and clear your plate. Stop when you're full because I feel like especially society and I know that growing up, like for me at least, my parents will always tell me, oh, finish your food. Don't, you know, don't waste your food. There are a ton of starving children in Africa as if that like was relevant to where we were and that time that we were in. Like it literally doesn't matter. Like when you really zoom out and think about it, like you not finishing your food really doesn't affect anyone but you. Like if anything, you probably waste a little money uh, worth of groceries, but at the end of the day, like it, that doesn't really matter that much in itself either. Like if you think about it, you just downing the rest of your food for the sake of it in an effort to quote, save money. That is really just like what you're paying for is just all of the extra count. Like you might not be paying for, you might be getting your money's worth in that you're getting your money's worth and not throwing money away, but all the extra calories that you're eating, you're going to have to pay for that sooner or later because all those extra calories are going to eventually end up as fat stores. So it's just deciding like, what do you want to pay for it? Like, would you rather throw a little bit of money into the trash or would you rather like end up eating a lot more calories than you intended? And you know, you're, you're paying for it like with your health and with your time and effort when you're actively trying to lose weight. So it's actually working against you and actually going to cost you more money and time down the road. So yeah, that's that's definitely something to think about. Um, let's see, I think, I think that's about it for the restaurants. I felt like I had something else to add, but yeah, okay, let's move on. Now, the, one of the reasons why I love this method so much is just like super easy to follow and just due to the nature of this, like you're generally, it, it helps you make informed decisions, but it also like doesn't have the connotation that like, oh, I have to be tracking calories, I have to be watching every single calorie. Like generally this teaches you to focus on more whole, nutritious, lower calorie foods. And it also tells you to have some sort of restraint, like not saying that you uh, like my other podcast, not saying that you have to have like complete control or like be completely restrictive in your diet and not saying that you should have, that you should have zero restriction. Like some form of restriction is good. Like having some form of restriction is going to ultimately what's going to get you into a calorie deficit. So yeah, just having that restriction helps you stay on course, but having too much will ultimately lead you off course because you're going to give up or you're just going to hate it. But yeah, just finding that sweet middle ground but this is just a suggestion on what you can do. Um, again, th find, the, find the method of dieting that feels the least restrictive for you. Like uh, you could be trying this, you could be trying counting calories, you could be doing intermittent fasting, ketogenic, even though I am very opinionated on people who do keto. But yeah, ultimately like find the method that works best for you and then before I sign off on here, I do want to do a side, um, just have a side note on intuitive eating and calorie counting, because I know this is definitely the trendy thing to talk about nowadays of about intuitive eating. So a lot of people, you'll definitely see something along the lines of, you know, stop counting calories, following diets or following diet culture or doing this and just do intuitive eating and forget about losing weight. So First off, I do want to say that there are two kind of separate camps to intuitive eating. I know one of them is that they don't focus on losing weight at all, which is like completely fine. It's just about like healing from disordered eating patterns and healing from just like diet culture and just really focusing and honing in on your hunger cues. I, I'm like totally for that if that is your goal. But the simple fact is if you want to lose weight, you're not going to do that. And they and they even explicitly say that. And what I find that a lot of people who go through this, like they think that this is some sort of like healing way for them to ultimately lead them to a better place of losing weight and forming a better relationship with food. 
However, like if you do want to lose weight, there is nothing wrong with that. And simply put, intuitive eating is not going to get you to like lose weight. Like you have, you cannot be trusting trusting your quote intuition to lose weight. Like I'm sorry to say it, this is just the like harsh truth you need to hear. That like you can't be intuitive because honestly, like if I were like let's be honest here, if I were truly intuitive with what I wanted to eat, it would not be a bunch of vegetables, a bunch of fruits. It would definitely be a bunch of like junk food that, you know, and I would constantly eat it. Like this, like this is not even like a disordered eating pattern. Like simply put, like us humans, like we, we crave these high sugar, high fatty foods because of the fact of evolution. These were calorie dense and we wanted to put on a lot of body fat because we didn't know when we would get food next. And when you think about it from an evolutionary standpoint, like we did not have grocery stores back then. We did not have food so readily available, just like within a five minute drive, like food like literally had to be hunted for. And sometimes we would go weeks without food. So we wouldn't know when food would come next. So it was definitely helpful for us to eat these high calorie dense foods so we could store it and we would have energy for weeks at a time. So yeah, intuitive eating is ultimately is not going to get you there. Um, however, I do want to say that ultimately we do want to get you to a point of, you know, not intuitive eating. I don't really have a name for it, but it's, uh, let's call it modified intuitive eating that we, we do want to get to a point where you can make informed, like eating choices, but you don't necessarily have to track it. You don't have to be so meticulous about it. You just have to have that kind of flexibility. And I think this three plates, two snacks is definitely a good precursor to it because uh, you don't want to just start out like, because you, you can't start out knowing what to do. It's like, this is the equivalent of like trying to ride a bike without having used training wheels. Like, I don't know, there's a small chance, you know, one person out or a few people out there might like just have like magically gotten it on the first few tries. But for the majority of us, we had training wheels on, we practiced biking with training wheels and eventually we learn how to do it. We learn the motion and eventually we took the training wheels off and we learned how to balance all ourselves. And we were soon, yeah, soon enough, we were just biking on our own with no training wheels and just all by ourselves. So same thing goes for learning how to modif modified intuitively eat. Like you're not going to day three be able to just magically make informed decisions. Like this stuff is going to take time. This stuff is going to take practice. You are going to have to have training wheels some sort of structure to get you into place before you, you know, ultimately go off on your own and be flexible and make smart decisions and do this thing by yourself. So yeah. And I, yeah. And honestly, what I think the, the best way for a lot of people is to start tracking calories, be aware of how many calories you're putting into your body and ultimately you won't need this. So yeah. But uh, if you don't, but if you don't want to count calories, definitely try this three plates, two snacks method. And again, it's a, it's, it's a sort of like training wheels. And I also do want to say that eventually, like as you get closer and closer to your goals, it's going to kind of get easier because once you have these like habits and have these practices in play, you'll, yeah, you'll, you'll basically learn how to do like you basically everything's going to be like on autopilot so you don't have to like consciously consciously always think about your food choices it will just kind of come automatically so ingraining these habits in play like it's just it's just awesome so and, and an analogy i like to think about it's kind of like saving money like first off like when you don't have any money saved up you'll feel like oh i have to be so meticulous i have to count every single penny make sure that i'm saving everything like and not like excessively spending on like other things I don't need. But as you like, you know, as you build a comfortable savings amount, you'll, you feel like you can splurge a bit here and there and you just won't have that many consequences. You, yeah, you feel like you have more flexibility and that honestly, the same thing goes for dining. Like the longer you do this, the longer you kind of pay your dues and save up, then all like you, you can actually have more splurges here and there and really, be able to do it without like stressing too much and yeah again it's it's about having that like amount saved up
big but when you're first starting obviously you you don't have anything saved up like honestly speaking all the splurging you did was you you had done it already that, and that's what ultimately led you to gain all the weight but yeah so you can't just go into it just learning how to like splurge you have to go into it with a little bit more uh, i don't want to say restriction but a little bit more of like intention into what you're doing and really uh focusing on what you want to achieve at first you're really gonna you're really gonna have to work harder and put more effort into it but ultimately as thing gets more comfortable as you really ingrain the habits and just get used to doing the process and it just becomes a part of everyday life it's going to be easier i promise so yeah um uh, that that's about all i wanted to cover eventually yeah modified intuitive eating will help you know what uh, yeah when you are able to get to that level of intuitive eating you'll know how to develop knowing what portion sizes look like knowing the ballpark calorie content of the portion sizes and knowing which foods are best helping you stay consistent uh have foods in the moderation and ultimately enjoy it obviously no one's diet is going to be the exact same as some other persons so don't be afraid to mess up and if you mess up use every mess up as a learning opportunity and keep going and ultimately as long as you always look for a solution and always look for ways to like do better than last time then you can't mess this up and yeah keep going but other than that that about wraps it up for this episode of the podcast thank you so much for listening i really hope this helped you get toward get you closer to your weight loss goals uh and give you probably and probably give you something to think about if you were thinking about uh trying to lose weight but you struggle with counting calories so yeah other than that thank you so much for listening uh be sure to leave a five-star review if this has helped you and a written review definitely helps as well helps me know that you know the reviews are actually written by a real person and it also helps you get feedback for if the content i'm putting out is helping but yeah thank you so much for listening and i'll catch you in the next one